the, re the re reality was I called and I okay, said, hey, good. man, I got a bite. You know, good. We, we, perfect. We, I like that better. Yeah. I said, I've yeah. got a bite. If you guys want to do something, we can, you know. Let's do it. And if yeah. I have to do it with Steve, that's okay. <laughs> can I put that in there? Yeah, that's good. I already put it in there, so. <laughs> One of the keys to success, when you hear about a hot bite, you go. And when that call comes from George Little, you know it's a sure thing. Steve is heading to one of Minnesota's top lakes. My good buddy George called me, the bite is going on Mille Lacs, and that's where I'm headed. Now Mille Lacs is known as a walleye hotspot, but today we're targeting smallmouth. The bite is great, the bite's good right now. We're doing some something a little bit different, really light tackle. 332nd ounce head, six pound line, gin clear water, and it's a lot of fun. All about electronics. You've got to be, because you're fishing in the middle of nowhere, and you've got to be on the, the specific piece of structure. And bam! There's one. There's one. You know, a lot of times smallmouth focus on crayfish and minnows and that sort of thing, but we're actually focusing on fish that are keen that. on bugs, specifically mayflies. And we caught him, huh? Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Released him. Somebody's been here before. On our lake? We'll help that. <laughs> on our Get lake? Get out of them. But just a little three inch black gulp grub, retrieving it. Pretty cool pattern was still working and we were going to catch a bunch. I like this technique. It's just leaded, piece of soft plastic. And a constant retrieve. And a light line and just throw it as far as you can. That was the key in this super clear water to get it as far away from the boat as you could. Count it down to a depth of about two, one, two, and just constantly retrieve it. It was as easy, as simple as you could imagine. Oh, that's a big one. That's a nice one, that's a nice one Steve. Good, good job, bud. Oh, <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> there. Look at that one. There you go. There's one. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> what a jump. But what we were doing as we were catching those fish that were post-spawn. And oh, they were done spawning, yeah, they were it. off of their beds and they were out looking to feed and they were suspended. And catching these suspended fish, suspended fish are very hard to catch, but when you can figure out how to catch them, you can catch a bunch of them. And that's what we're trying to do today. One of the challenges to consistent success is looking for methods that nobody else is throwing. We weren't throwing buzz baits or spinner baits or jigs or cross. We are targeting fish that we're targeting a specific ford. This will absolutely work anywhere. If you were to go and throw a spinnerbait or a crankbait in the same water column that we were fishing, you wouldn't get a strike. That was the really unique thing about this, is they were honed in on very, very small bait. And this little grub did the trick. There's one. Whoa. <laughs> Good fish. Yeah. Drag slipping there, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we are. <laughs> nice. And then nice. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. What a fun technique. It's a great technique, and it is a lot of fun. We're catching them. It was kind of funny, we got out there and I told Steve what the pattern was and he said, well, can we try this or can we try that? And, you know, he, he hadn't been out there, hadn't experienced it, and, and I don't blame him because it was a little bit off the wall. I need to mention something here. It was his water, his fish, his spot, and his technique. Of course it was going to take me a while to catch up. This is North American Fisherman. 
North American Fisherman is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. By Berkeley Trilene, Anglers Trust Berkeley Trilene, America's strongest. Quebec, providing emotions since 1534. Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keeps ice longer. And by these other fine sponsors. So I'm in the office, the phone rings and it's George Little and he is so excited he cannot even talk. All I heard was Malax, I heard smallmouth and a bizarre technique that's really working. Of course, I was on my way out the door. George's technique is <laughs> nice. something he calls nice. oh, off the good. wall, but it catches fish. Technique. I said, Steve, just do this. Just throw it out and reel it in and we're gonna catch him. But he, he was kind of funny because he wanted to try a, a few different things. But after I caught about six or eight, it was his water, his fish, his spot, and his technique. Of course it was gonna take me a while to catch up. Oh, there we go, Steve. Oh, there's one. There we go, Steve. So George thinks he's kicking my butt. <laughs> George, let's go back a few years to Lake El Salto. Oh, got him, got him. <laughs> Oh, yes. good job, Steve. Thank you, sir. Got him. Yeah, Got good him. job, buddy. Oh. Are you having fun? Is this guy? <laughs> just want to know if you're having fun. That's wow. A, that's a seven. All kidding aside, George is a great angler, a fun guy to fish with. I enjoy every chance we can to get out. George, I got one. You're fishing light baits. You're fishing light equipment. Look at that one. Already. Nice job, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. One of the greatest things about smallmouth fishing, you can fish very basic gear and it doesn't get more basic than today. Eighth ounce Northland uh, lipstick jig head. This is a three inch gulp grub. I've got eight pound mono. This is Berkeley's sensation. This is a seven foot medium action Abu Garcia verdict rod and a Revo Premier spinning reel. The technique was simple. Make long casts over these rock reefs and just reel in real steady. No jigging whatsoever. The bites were just basically a little bit of weight on the rod, load up, set the hook, and you hooked up. It was as easy, as simple as you could imagine, and the bite was just a little tick on the line, and game on. Right there. Like that. Like that. <laughs> it just, I mean, it it's just literally, heavy. that's one of the lightest bites I've, yeah. I've ever experienced. Very guy. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? Oh, not at all. Nothing. Nothing. What do you think? What do I think? I think he's gorgeous. <laughs> I think it's my turn. Uh, That's what I think. You know, really healthy, clean bodies of water have great insect hatches, and one of the best is the mayfly hatch. Now, a mayfly larva looks like a small, about an inch long bug that comes up in the water and it wiggles. These grubs did a great job of mimicking what the smallmouth were feeding on. There you go, Steve. Okay. All right, take it easy on me. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> there we go. Both, both are working good, but black, it's pretty hard to go wrong with a black bait oh, anytime. But you make it gulp on top of it, and that's a bonus. Wow. One thing I can say about this technique is try it. I fish these same areas with my arsenal of smallmouth baits, my, my uh, topwater baits, my little poppers, my tube jigs, uh, my finesse jigs, all my smallmouth arsenal, and you catch one or two, but then you take and you, you throw this little grub out there and just retrieve it back, and bam, you catch fish. You catch <laughs> five and six fish off of one spot where you couldn't get bit with anything. It was an eye-opening experience yeah. and one you should try. <laughs> good one. It feels pretty good. Oh yeah. Whoa! <laughs> oh, I got one too. <laughs> Double dude! Woo! Look at this! Look at this! <laughs> Let me see. Here's that. He's right here. Oh! What a jump! <laughs> Alright. Got him. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Look at I'd that. say that's good. Actually. Oh, look yeah. at that grub. Yeah. With the exception of catching a five or six pounder, the day couldn't have went better. It really 
we had them kind of we had them yeah, dialed in. Yeah. They were exactly where we thought they'd be. We caught as many fish as we thought we'd catch, and we just had a great time. The weather was perfect. There wasn't any wind. Look at that. You just don't get many trips like that. Once again, it's a memory I'll never forget, but I can't wait till next year, same time, to try to catch them the same way. <laughs> Got one? Got one, Steve. <laughs> what he thought of me. <laughs> one of the better ones we've got today. Yeah, that's a good one. Wow, I gotta get a picture of that one. Yeah, nice. How's that? Woo! <laughs> that is a good one. You gonna put this in your family album for me? That's right. <laughs> Was that the biggest one that I the boats that, caught today? I think that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. When you use the right gear, you catch more fish. And I want you to enjoy the exact same success that we did on today's show. That's why we're giving you a chance to win the selection of lines and lures that we use. Including a spool of eight pound Berkley Trilene XL monofilament, and a spool of 10 pound Berkley Trilene XL monofilament, a package of three inch gulp grubs, and a package of three inch power grubs. To enter this free drawing, go to Facebook and like the fishing club. Then click on the TV tested win what's working button at the top of the page and follow the simple instructions. Love the fish? Then like the fishing club on Facebook. There's a lot to like and a lot to win. Up next, salmon stocking and the latest battle in knot wars. You're watching North American Fishermen. Welcome to Knot Wars, where we pick fishing's best knots in a head-to-head -head competition to determine which knot you can count on. Last week, I have to admit I was shocked when the eye crosser beat the Homer Circle Knot, the reigning 2011 Knot Wars champ. This knot is phenomenal with mono, fluorocarbon, and braid. However, the eye crosser proves stronger with mono. For consistency, all testing will be done with 14 pound Berkley XT Tough Red Monofilament. The weekly winner will be the knot with the highest overall average after it's tied and tested a minimum of 12 times. If you missed last week's episode, here's a refresh on how to tie the eye crosser. Run the line through the hook eye twice and then back up the main line about eight inches. Bring the tag end back toward the hook and wrap it around the parallel lines two to three times. Finally, moisten with a bit of saliva and draw tight. The Challenger this week also debuted in the first season of Knot Wars. The Trilene Knot was developed by the folks at Berkeley specifically for their lines and it's known for its strength with mono. Here's how you tie it. Start by running the tag end through the hook eye two times to form a loop. Next, take the tag end and wrap it up the main line three to five times. Now, insert the tag end through the loop near the eye of the hook, moisten with a bit of saliva, and carefully draw tight. So it's the eye crosser versus the trilene knot. Which is stronger with mono? Let's find out. I already have the trusty knot testing machine set up. We've got the eye crosser here on the left, our challenger, the trilene knot, here on the right. Here goes. Woo! Did you see that? The trilene has knocked off and just popped. The trilene knot has just knocked off the eye crosser knot in spectacular fashion. Look at these scores 22.6. Remember, we're tying this with 14 pound trilene XT. And you know what that means? It means the trilene knot moves on to next week where it faces another tough competitor in the World's Fair knot. One of the most interesting knots I've ever tied. Should be a great battle. By the way, if you'd like to practice the trilene knot, the eye crosser, or any of the knots featured in Knot Wars, simply visit fishingclub.com and click on Knot Wars. Or better yet, download your free Knot Wars app available both on Droid and iPhone. Knot Wars, because no good fish story ends in a broken knot. The Lorentzian Great Lakes have been invaded by more than 160 non-native aquatic species. One of the more noxious invaders was the alewife. 
It's been accused of numerous biological evils, but it affected so many people. When the ballooning populations died, washed up, and caused the closure of numerous beaches throughout the Great Lakes. Michigan Department of Natural Resources biologists conceived of a plan. In 1968, they imported Chinook salmon from Puget Sound and stocked them into Lake Huron. Within a year or two, the dead and dying alewives were gone, the beaches were open, and a billion dollar recreational fishery was spawned. From 1968 to 1984, all of the recreationally caught fish were believed to be from hatcheries. By 1991 to 1993, up to 30% of the fish in the recreational landings were wild spawned fish. With natural spawning occurring, Michigan DNR began to cut back on the stockings. The forage were beginning to show signs of depletion. Michigan and the province of Ontario marked all of the fish they stocked from 2000 to 2003. What they found was on average more than 80% of the fish that were landed were wild spawn fish. Similar things were occurring in the other Great Lakes where more than 50% of the recreational landings were wild spawned salmon. Well clearly the thing to do is quit stocking the fish. The population was self-sustaining, the forage population was fragile and on the verge of collapse. The anglers insisted on continuing to stock fish. Michigan DNR looked for a compromise, stocking fewer fish stocking only in certain areas. While they sought compromise, the biological jury came in. In 2004, the alewife population collapsed. It was no longer sufficient to support the Chinook salmon swimming in Lake Huron. A valuable lesson was learned. Stocking was no longer necessary. The more we know, the better we can manage. That's good for the fish, and that's good for the fish. The following products have been field tested and approved by members of the North American Fishing Club. Fluger's President Spinning Reel offers phenomenal features such as nine stainless steel ball bearings, an instant anti-reverse one-way clutch, and titanium coated spool lip. Alan Wyeth of Burnsville, North Carolina found it was perfect for tube fishing for small ones. If you would like to become a field tester, text the word FISH plus your email address to 57682. Coming up, the solution for storage wars on the boat. You're watching North American Fishermen. In the fishing industry, you have to stay on top of your game. You've got to make constant improvements. I don't care if it's rods, reels, line, baits, it doesn't matter. Even the boat companies. This is the new 2012 Z520 from Ranger. It's their best-selling boat. Well, we're going to show you a few things that they've changed this year to make the life of the angler a little bit easier. On the trailer, they've added a second step to the fender. We molded in the second step just above the stainless steel step. What does this do? It really helps you access the boat when you're at the ramp. And we all know you want to get in the boat and get on the water as soon as possible. All Ranger trailers have a center jack stand. But the improvement this year is a much larger wheel, so when the trailer is disconnected from the truck, it makes your life a lot easier. The front deck in the new Z520 is raised up two inches. You can see the top of my shoes here. What does that do for the angler? It gives you a higher vantage point, making it much easier to make a really, really accurate cast when pitching or flipping. Another benefit of raising the deck two inches in the front of the boat is you gain tackle storage in every one of these boxes You've got two more inches of space. Also, in your cooler, two more inches of ice. It's a real benefit to raising the front deck. They took a look at the console and made it larger. Now it will accept up to a 10-inch unit right here in front of you where it needs to be. So when you're driving down the lake, you can see your waypoints. You can see how deep it is, and you won't run aground. The other bonus is you don't have a locator sitting out here on a ram mount that you're always worried if you went into a motel or a restaurant that somebody would help themselves to your unit. Now, everything is right here in front of you where it needs to be. As you can see, even on Ranger's best-selling model, the Z520, they're constantly looking to improve it by asking us, the anglers. And that's why they're gonna remain the leader in the industry. There's one, George. There you go. They're eating well, aren't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. That was fun. The technique absolutely fooled them. 
So they were eating the whole thing. We needed a pair of pliers, and and come to find that Steve didn't have a pair of pliers, and I, you know, I didn't know what was going on. So he dug out his grandpa's old, you know, fish unhooker thing, and and uh, I'm gonna have to. One thing I will do is get Steve a new pair of pliers before we go back out. So George thinks I need a new set of pliers. Why? These things work great. Fish, fish. You know what? This would be a good fish to uh, call it quits on. To go home on? Yeah. I really don't want to go home. Oh, I don't either. <laughs> this has been way too much fun. Look at it. Oh, it's beautiful in that water. Look at where he's hooked. He's hooked in the bottom lip. Okay. Weird. That works, right? <laughs> we'll see. I got to get him in. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Good deal. Look at that. Yeah. The good tank. Good deal. Well, I tell you what. We have had a ball today catching fish like this and, yeah. a, and a great technique just cast these little grubs out at the power grub and reel it in on a straight retrieve and fish like that let's let him go and head back for the ranch sounds good how's that look at that in that water oh. <laughs> north american fisherman is brought to you by yamaha outboards reliability starts here by abu garcia for life. Berkeley Gulp Alive. Looks alive, feels alive, tastes alive. And by these other fine sponsors. <laughs>